Mr Chairman, I uh, would like you to rule, please, as to whether uh, Clause 109, which is on page 69 of the original legislation as reported by the Finance and Expenditure Committee, uh, is in fact virus, uh, and that it's headed a consequ consequential amendments to the Inland Revenue Act's um, uh, colon ACC change. Uh, my question, sir, is... Uh, or my point is that I've searched back through the bill, and I haven't, to be fair, searched through the supplementary order paper, but I, I, I think that's probably not relevant. Uh, uh, but, sir, it says the provisions in the enactment listed in the schedule are amended by replacing Injury Prevention, Rehabilitation and Compensation Act 2001 by Accident Compensation Act 2001. And, and, and so there's no doubt that that act has changed, but the point that I'm making, sir, is that this is not a consequential amendment on the legislation with which we are dealing, and therefore, um, and, and therefore can't be a consequential amendment uh, flowing uh, out of this. And I'm asking you to rule uh, that Clause 109 uh, uh, should be struck from the bill. Um, an interesting question um, <clears throat> from the member. Uh, PCO have drafted this um, into the bill as a consequential uh, amendment to the IRD Act um, and the ACC change. If uh, the House is not of a mind to support that, they will vote it down when we come to um, vote on this particular part. Which is in this part. Well, Which is in this part. Well, and uh, that's the opportunity uh, to vote uh, accordingly uh, if uh, one doesn't agree with it, but PCO have the uh, um, ha well, have included it. That's uh, something that uh, can happen, and it's up to whether um, whether you support that or not. And the vote, you'll vote accordingly. Point of order, uh, the honourable. Uh, and, and, and I've sort of, I, I think I'm apologising in advance for disagreeing with your ruling, and certainly the, the, the rationale behind it. So the fact that PCO have included something in a bill. Uh, is, in, is in fact, I think, probably something that shouldn't be referred to um, either by members or, or, or in the House. So the, response, the responsibility for the bill is the Minister's, uh, currently uh, the Minister in the Chair, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and the Government does have to take responsibility for it. Uh, the, fact, the fact that PCO has put something in, it's not a question, sir, of whether or not the House agrees with it or not. It's a question is as to whether it is within the virus of the bill. Yep. Uh, and so well, my clear submission to you is I, I know, that this, I know is what not, you're saying, yeah. this yep. cannot be consequential. It's, um, look, um, <coughs> this is in the, um, in the bill as presented. It's been through a select committee. It has been deliberated on. Uh, and that it's not an amendment. This is actually a... In, Page 69 of the original bill, which has been you through the. I understand it. Well, you so well, my, my point is that it has been in the bill from day one and it's been accepted in a first reading, a second reading, and the select committee process, and it is um, uh, contained here. And as I said, if the member is not happy with it or the party is not happy with it, they have the opportunity to vote this down. I made the point there about the consequential amendment earlier on, is that uh, this is a consequential amendment to other uh, particular acts, and they're actually mentioned here. So it is in order, um, otherwise it is, um, uh, it is just like the other amendments uh, throughout the bill, uh, and it's within the scope of the bill, and uh, I've, so that's my ruling. Um, the Honourable Darren Hughes. Thank, thank you, Mr Chairman. I think the point um, Mr Mallard is, uh, is, is making uh, is that he's not pointing to a policy disagreement where your ruling would be correct, that members of the committee vote things up or down depending on their, their, their political view about the policy merits of, of, a, of a clause. I think what Mr Mallard is trying to do in a dispassionate way is make the point that the technicality of the way the bill has been prepared, that there, there has been an error in it. Now, that is not a... 
Um, that is not a policy matter. And the fact that this error has just been discovered, and in a very big bill, and the tax bills are very technical, I think what, what, he's, uh, what he's pointing out is that the fact that only just been, that error has only been discovered now uh, it d d doesn't mean that because it received a first and second reading and select committee judgment, uh, consideration and it was not discovered at that point, uh, that doesn't change the fact that the structure of the bill in front of us now is not technically in a correct form. And when it's technically correct, then we return to our policy debate. In fact, sir, I'll say to you, that's the whole point of the Committee of the Whole, often something that's lost uh, during this part of the process. This is the detailed, and you'll recall, sir, that uh, up until a few years ago, the Committee of the Whole took a bill clause by clause, went through it clause by clause in order to make sure that the, the pro proper consideration uh, could be given uh, and any errors could be uh, found. We now do that part by part. And perhaps what's, what, what, that, what Mr Mallard has shown by, by the fact we are doing it part by part means that there is the opportunity for these things to be missed, which didn't happen when it was a clause by clause uh, assessment. So the purpose of the Committee of the Whole is to scrutinise uh, a bill in detail. Now, 99% of the time that will be policy differences, and we've seen those argued out um, uh, uh, t t today. He's not making a policy point. What he's, what he's doing is pointing out a technical uh, problem with, with, with the construct of the actual legislation. And I think it would be wrong for us to, to continue until we've got that, that, that corrected so that we can return to the policy debates uh, that, that we need to have. But I, but I think the point he's making shouldn't be Look, I, uh, overlooked. <coughs> the, the, the member has... Um, well, I'll hear um, uh, the Honourable Dr Wayne Mack. Associate Law Professor. Mr Speaker, I, my, <laughs> speaking to the point of order, I, I have to say that uh, the submissions or the points of order, which are actually hardly points of order, are actually incorrect in substance. This bill of itself means a particular Inland Revenue Act, the GST Act, and indeed other acts as well. The schedule relates to the Inland Revenue Acts uh, per se, and all its intent, and, and thus it's appropriate that section 109, uh, 109 in fact, amends inland revenue acts, or actually more accurately schedules to in inland revenue acts. It's entirely within the scope of the bill. And frankly, I think we know what we are seeing with these particular points of order. Yep. Sorry. Thank Sorry. you. Now, uh, well, I'll hear the member for yeah, the last and, 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 sir, it might be something that can be fixed up uh, relatively easily, because I think most of us are aware that the, that the headers, uh, in fact, don't end up in the, in the legislation uh, going forward. The, uh, the, the consequential amendments, the Income Act, uh, Inland Revenue Acts, ACC change, that the, the, the words in bold and lines 10 and 11, uh, when... The, these Inland Revenue Acts are amended as per the, the ones listed uh, in the schedule, the Income Tax Act uh, 2007 Tax Administration uh, Act, Goods and Services and KiwiSaver Act. Uh, this, this, these things won't flow into those. And I wonder, it wouldn't make, I don't think anything would be lost if, if by the leave of the House we just took the header out, the inaccurate part of it. No, the header is part of it. Yeah, yeah. This is. Um, <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. This is a permitted clause. It's an omnibus bill. Um, it does make um, amendments across all inland revenue bills, as has uh, as been identified. If um, it was out of order, I said earlier that it was within the scope of the bill, I said that earlier, that if it was outside the scope, it would have been ruled out at a first reading. Uh, or subsequently at a second reading, but the Speaker would have ruled it out at a, first re uh, at a first reading as being outside the scope and not being part of the bill. So the title uh, that we have here, the way it's presented, well, it can be, it can be ruled out um, at, a, at an earlier stage. It's been through, as I mentioned, a first reading, it's been to committee, yeah. it's had a second reading. Is the Speaker ruled it? No, I'm, I'm not saying it's in order. And I'm, I'm ruling that it's an order. As presented, it's an order. And uh, we'll continue on that basis. So Brendan Bird says a call. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I wanted to just talk for a moment about um, part, uh, Clause 106, which, uh, as uh, laid out in the clause, uh, relates to effectively providing...